The Figure in the Shadows by John Belairs, Chapter 8. When he woke up the next morning, Lewis found his room filled with bright winter sunlight. The dark figure that had waited for him under the street lamp seemed like something he had read about or dreamed about. As he dressed, the pirate movie feeling flowed back into him. He felt like a million dollars. Should he tell Rose Rita after all? Lewis hesitated. Yes, maybe he ought to, just to get it off his chest. He could call her up before breakfast to catch her before she left the house. But when he got to the phone, Lewis's resolve melted. He stood there with the receiver in his hand while the operator said, Number, please. Number, please. And then he hung up. Oh, well, he could talk to her at school. Lewis saw Rose Rita several times that day at school, but each time as he was working himself up to say something about the amulet, something tightened up inside him, and he wound up talking about the Notre Dame football game, or the galley they were building, or Miss Haggerty, or anything but the amulet. When he went home from school that day, Lewis still had not managed to tell Rose Rita what he wanted to tell her, but as he walked home in the winter dusk, Lewis saw that the streetlights were on. He stopped. Beads of sweat were breaking out on his forehead. The horror of the figure under the lamp swept over him like an icy wave. Lewis pulled himself together. He clenched his teeth and doubled his fists. He was going to have to tell Rose Rita about the amulet, and he was going to tell her tonight. That evening, in the middle of dinner, Lewis laid down his fork, swallowed several times, and said in a dry, husky voice, Uncle Jonathan, can I invite Rose Rita over to stay tonight? Jonathan did a double take. Hmm, well, Lewis, this is rather short notice, but I'll see what I can do. I'll have to ask her mother's permission first. After dinner, Jonathan phoned up Mrs. Pottinger and got her permission for Rose Rita to spend the night over at the Barnevelt's house. Quite by accident, Jonathan discovered that Lewis had not yet asked Rose Rita if she wanted to come over, so he dragged Lewis to the phone and got him to make a formal invitation. Then everything was settled. Lewis and Jonathan went upstairs to one of the many spare bedrooms and made the bed and laid out the guest towels. Lewis was excited. He was looking forward to a long evening of card games and stories and conversations. Maybe he could even get in a word about his amulet. When Rosrita got to Lewis's house, the dining room table was all laid out for poker. There were the blue and gold cards with Capernaum County Magician Society stamped on them. There were the foreign coins that Jonathan used as poker chips. On a plate with a bright purple border was a big pile of chocolate chip cookies, and there was a pitcher of milk. Mrs. Zimmerman was there, and she promised not to pull any funny business with the cards. Everything was ready. They played for a long time. Then, just as Jonathan was about to announce that it was bedtime, Lewis asked if he could have a few words with Rose Rita alone in the library. As he asked this, Lewis felt the tightness in his chest again, and he felt a sharp pain right where the amulet was. Jonathan chuckled and knocked his pipe out onto the potted plant behind the ch his chair. Sure, he said. Sure, go right ahead. State secrets, eh? Yeah, kinda, said Lewis, blushing. Lewis and Rose Rita went into the library and slid the heavy panel doors shut. Now Lewis felt like somebody who was trying to breathe underwater. But he dragged the words out one by one. Rose Rita? Yeah, what's wrong with you, Lewis? You look all pale. R Rose Rita, remember when we said the, the magic words over the coin? Lewis stopped and winced. He felt a sharp pain in his chest. Rosarita looked puzzled. Yeah, I remember. What about it? Lewis felt as if someone was sticking red-hot needles into his chest. Well, I... I kind of lied about it. Sweat was pouring down his face now. He felt triumphant because he was winning over whatever was trying to keep him from telling the truth. Rosarita's eyes opened wide. You lied? You mean the coin was really... Yeah. Lewis reached inside his shirt and brought the thing out for her to see. He expected it to be red hot, but it felt cool to his touch and looked just the way it had always looked. Now that he had gotten out the important part, Lewis found that he could talk more freely. He told Rose Rita about how he had punched Woody, Woody without meaning to. He told her about the postcard and the paper on the street and the figure under the street lamp. Now it was like running downhill. He talked faster and faster until he had nothing more to say. Rose Rita sat there, nodding and listening through his whole speech. When he was through, she said, Gee, Lewis, don't you think we ought to tell your uncle and Mrs. Zimmerman? They know all about this stuff. They know all about stuff like this. Lewis looked terrified. Please don't, Rose Rita. Please, please don't. My uncle would get mad and ball me out, and I don't know what he and Mrs. Zimmerman would think. They told me never to mess around with magic again. Please don't say anything to them. Rose Rita had not known Lewis long, but she did know that he spent a great deal of time worrying about being ball.